Welcome, ladies, to the Real Estate Investor Show, providing inspiration, strategies, and insight to empower women investors to live balanced and financially free lives. Now, here are your co-hosts, Liz and Andressa. Welcome back. This is Liz. And this is Andressa. Welcome back to the Real Estate Investor Show. So excited to have you back with us for another mini-sode. Right, Andressa? What do we do on mini-sodes? Listen, mini-sodes are like you're going to some place or you are at the gym and you want to get something today and you have a busy schedule, but you want to, you know, get like knowledge about real estate, business strategies, or self-care. So this is what it is. A 10-minute shot of our experience or something that is like burning. Yes. Yes. And we, and we need to and talk we, about. And we talk about, yes. And we focus on three pillars, right? The three pillars that we really are basis of our community that we're building, our global community, which is real estate investing, obviously, is the core. But then it's also business, right? How do we actually operate our investments? And then our, our and then self-care. Are we actually taking care of ourselves in the process? And that's sometimes hard as 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 women. Okay. So what we're talking about today on Jessa, I am up for another yes, mini You are. So this is all about getting over the fear of using private money. Oh, God. It's probably one of the biggest topics <laughs> we just, hear. I just hear that because it is a fear, right? People, it doesn't matter what it is. Absolutely. And it, it's a huge fear. And I, honestly, I think it's a fear. I mean, we'd have to do a poll on this, but I think it's a fear more for women than men. Mm. And, you know, statistically, there's so much research now that, you know, you and I have gotten into the space yeah. Of, of supporting women, creating a women's organization and everything we're doing, you know, I've been, I've been so, we've been so fortunate and so intrigued with all the different actual statistics out there of statistically, right. Where, where women get confidence from and all those sort of things. And, and I think it, uh, women don't want to fail. They're cautious. They don't want to fail and uh, neither do men, of course, but I think there's just this, this idea that before I go into something, I got to really perfect it. I got to really be a hundred percent. You know, and that that that's that's the case for a lot of women that that we've we've talked to. So I wanted to give um, six kind of steps and six kind of strategies, if you will, because the mini so is all about you know four to six tip strategies, so that you can hear something, one thing, and take it away within ten minutes. You've gotten one takeaway that you can improve your your um, you know investing journey and create the financial freedom that you want in your own way. So that's our goal here. So I, I put together kind of prerequisites and. You know, obviously, there's so much about building your confidence. And I think that's the biggest fear is that just women aren't confident. So how do you build your confidence, right? That's the, that's the million dollar question. And how do you do it in a way that doesn't take 10 years? So I have a few steps here. Obviously, we know education is critical, right? We know education is like the most important thing when we're really learning something. But I think often women especially will over-educate themselves, right? You know, you'll talk to people and go, I'm... Um, I'm learning about, uh, you know, I'm learning about private money. I've done a few deals and I'm ready for it. And, and, and you ask how long you've been studying this. Oh, a few years. I mean, you know, a few years is a long time. <laughs> so you may not be around in a few years. So I don't mean to dismiss the point of education, but you got to be mindful of taking too much time sometimes. So first thing you want to be educated on is really being very, very knowledgeable about the difference between debt and equity. So you need to get clear on that. And there's a lot of resources. You really want to be mindful of when to use those two things. One is lending. One is one is a, more of a partnership, right? And you need to be be mindful. You need to know what the tools are in your toolbox as, as you're raising private money. The the second thing too around that is really the idea of educating yourself around being getting when you're raising private money and using private money partners. How active or passive do these people need to be? So you really need to get educated around that because if you're not educated around that, you could be bringing, you could be partnering with someone and and get into you know some issues with the SEC. You don't want that to happen. So you need to know what you're doing around that. Not to say don't go there because so many people stay away from equity for that reason and they just keep doing like you know working with lenders. Um, we our first private money deal was an equity deal. It wasn't lending actually. So that's the context I come from. And it was a small deal. It was a single family, two single family homes. So again, equity could be a great tool. So could debt, but you need to know the differences and you need to know the differences between active and passive um, as you're educating yourself. The other thing that's critical to get over the fear of, your, of, of you know, using private money is to know your market inside and out that you want to use that private money for, 
right? So if you're really confident in, you know, New Mexico, and that is what you know, that's going to make you feel more confident about raising private money for that area. If you're not confident in the area, you're not confident in raising private money, you're not confident in the team, of course, you're going to have a, a ton of fear, right? I mean, obviously. So you want to you want to mitigate your risk and you want to make sure you are educated and you know your market inside and out. What goes along with that too, which is three, is really knowing your asset class, right? So if self-storage is your thing and you want to raise money for self-storage, well, then you better know self-storage inside and out, or at least as much as you possibly can to make that first step or make that leap. If multifamily is a focus for you, same thing. So just know, know and not, you're going to have to know everything. That's like peeling back a layer of an onion. Don't think you need to know everything, but you need to know enough to speak about it competently and also to present deals to private money partners because they're going to ask you questions and you're going to need to know about the market and the deal and obviously the team. The fourth thing I'd say is, as, as, as you build your confidence, you get over the fears, get mentorship. You know, get that, get that community, that mentorship. That's why Andres and I are so committed to what we're doing within our community and all the different things that we're offering and just the things that we're, we're building is because it's it really comes down to confidence and community and you need both. Um, and so mentorship can really, we can have a whole day on topic of that, you know, that discussion. But the idea of mentorship is going to people who have come before you. There's a lot of people who have successfully raised money, private money. What are they doing? What are they thinking? What are they saying? So just study that. The fifth thing is um, what if scenarios? What if scenarios? I think I think that's the biggest fear people have around using private money is what if I lose that person's money? And that's a real fear. I mean, that's a real concern. Uh, you know, and that that makes complete sense. However, you really need to know what the worst case scenario is, you know, and, and so you need to play that out in your mind and have contingencies and having backup plans. And having the right paperwork, because they're taking a risk with you too. You got to remember that, especially on and on the equity side. Not saying you want to go out and intentionally lose someone's money or lose money of anyone's or yourselves. I don't think that would be. I would highly recommend you don't do that. Obviously, but if you're going after something, you need to know what the worst case scenario is and set yourself up for success. Obviously, right with the right paperwork, depending on if you're doing debt or equity. But really play that out. What's the worst thing that can happen here? I lose this person's money. What would I do in that in, in that um, situation? Quick story: We had a Burr property in in uh, New Jersey, and you know this property, Andressa, very well in Trenton. Yes. And it was a um, it was an absolute disaster. It's probably one of the worst projects we've ever had in terms of loss of money on one single project. And we had a private lender on a long term Burr strategy, which can absolutely kill you. And why is that? Because lenders get paid interest. And you want to get their money back as quickly as you can. This is not a long term, like, oh, well, you know, I'll work with you for five years. Well, think about how much interest we you'd have to owe someone in, in, in that time frame, right? It's great for them. Great for them. <laughs> so we ended up having to, after we 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 refinanced, we we finished it, we actually had a um we a hundred had a hundred thousand dollars we owed that lender. Mm. Couldn't pay back after the refinance, everything. And that was mostly that his interest. Think about that. Hundred wow. grand, that, that's that's a lot of money. That's not five thousand. Um, we paid him back. We made it work, and we we made it whole. And because that's what we do, and that's who we are. But that was the worst case scenario. We talk about worst case scenario. That was the most money I think we've ever lost in a property. Uh, that's stung, right? Because you're making money here, and now you're like, eh, just put that over there. But it is what it is, and you need to know what the worst case scenario is. We took good care of him. We did the right thing, and he's he's you know happy, and 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 rightfully so. So I just say that because you really need to play out the worst case scenario. I don't know what, what, where, how that could have got, gotten any worse, except if it was more than your grant. But regardless, you need to play it out and you need to be okay with what happens and you need to learn from it. Sixth thing is track record. I always say, if you're going to raise some raise private money, you need to have a track record. Now you can hear on a lot of podcasts that you could just literally get into a larger apartment complex by yourself with no knowledge that's that's awesome. However, there should be somebody on your team who has a track record. Someone on the controlling side of an asset, especially at that size, should have have experience, in my opinion. Uh, if everyone doesn't have the experience, I, I, you know, that's tough. I just I would just say I'll just say that you don't need to have it all. Someone on your team should. So so why I say the track record is critical 
Because you're building your own track record. Even if you've done a few deals, you can raise money. You know, you don't have to have 100 deals under your belt. If you have experience, that's a track record. Are you documenting it? Are you celebrating it? Are you sharing it with other people that are like, wow, what is she doing? So those are those are the things. And I and I'd say just start small. You know, start small. If you have fear of, of raising money and using private money, don't go try to get a lender for $200,000. Maybe it should be like $25,000 or $50,000. Start small. Our first private money deal was $50,000. And I, we were really, really nervous, right? And, then, and, it, and that's grown, right? So people, you know, giving half a million dollars. Imagine if we started there. I'm so grateful we didn't, right? Because it built our confidence. So confidence and community, the prerequisites, education around active, active, passive, debt equity, education, your market, know your asset class, mentorship, go down the path of what is the worst thing that can happen and can I live with that and how would I make it right? And then you building your track record and start small. So that's I what love I have that. for you today. I love that. We are, we are, Liz and I are reading the book, Who Not How, and I'm really obsessed about it. And I'm just uh, really hard on instead of the, the how, who. So how it creates a lot of quote unquote problems, right? Because then I don't know, then the fear kicks in. So start thinking about, as Liz said, who. Who can I get the support from? Who can, who already did what I'm looking to do that I can learn from? Because then you you bypass a lot of steps, and follow exactly what Liz is saying over here for uh, raising private money. Uh, I don't think there is a way around. You either are gonna do it now or later on in real estate investing. So might as well get started now. And as always with our mini sods, take one thing into, into your life and take action on it. And please share in our community what's coming up for you and how this is making a difference. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to receive updates on our next interviews, go to our website, therealestateinvestor.com. There you can subscribe to our show, become part of our investor community and get updates on upcoming episodes. If you like our show, please share it with other women who would benefit. And don't forget to leave us a rating on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. And as always, we encourage you to take one action as a result of today's show and put it into motion so you can live both a financially free and balanced life. Thanks for spending time with us. Ciao.